Hello everybody, welcome to my 2023 Grand Blue Fantasy Guide. In this video, we will go through the guidelines of what you as a new player are able to do and how to guide you to enter the mid game. With that, let's get started. As you start the game, you will be given some of the M1, Magna 1 weapons uh, from the gift box, which was given uh, two to three years ago during one of the events uh, as the way to invite new point player to be able to pick up the pace for mid-game to end-game content. Now, as you should know, M1 is indeed the lowest entry tier for most raids right now. So, having them right now means you, have to, you can skip through all of those annoying early game grinds, like going through a super rare uh, Tiamat maybe, for example, just to get that weapon and then phase them out to go into an SSR. This saves you a lot of resources, rupees, orbs, this, that can be used to uncap a lot more important weapons, such as dragons, or even opals and stuff. So all of these materials are saved as how it is intended to help new game uh, player progress. So you will be able to pick them up usually in the weapons tab around here. Obviously, mine is full of draw boxes, but for your new players, you should be full of uh, a lot of those uh, starting weapons which you should be using. So to equip them, basically go to the weapon tab and put them in your weapon grid. Now, this is just a sample of how like what a Magna 1 light would look like. It's simply uh, consisting of swords. Uh, obviously, this and this are kind of rare. You shouldn't be able to get them this early in the game. Uh, and they are mostly... These two are from Gacha, the two grand uh, wording hubs. So, most of the time, the game has transitioned away from standard farming and have a little bit of a mix back nowadays. But because of uh, how I want to formulate this video, to be as free to play friendly as possible, you can substitute these two grand for basically any other Xeno stuff or basically uh, event based items. Right? And we'll talk about the event based items later because uh, it's a whole bunch of stuff we can talk about over there. But basically, this is how uh, you should have for free to play. Obviously, if you do get one of these Luxac, uh, one of these Grand Harmonias though, specifically Harmonias, you just do fit them into the grid. They are pretty good as well. And you don't need to uh, uncap them because they you are using based on their base skills and not really their max skills. So yeah. Anyway, uh, for our next one, we can look at another one which I have uh, created just solely for this guy. A weapon master, which is a tier three, tier three class. You will learn about classes when you progress through the game, and the game progresses through. You will use CP to unlock. You unlock everything. You will need requirements. So some some of these require just one class to be directly leveled. And like weapon master, you need uh, I believe warrior and sentinel to be able to do this one. And holy saber is another like sentinel cleric kind of deal. So as the more you progress, the more requirement you need to unlock. Most of the stuff in the end section, like this one, require you to craft whole uh, three lines of their class champion weapons to be able to unlock them. Or more to say 50% of the class champion weapons to unlock them. But they are still expensive and you should put them as a early game goal because it is possible to get to early game. I wouldn't count this as mid game content. So you should kind of focus, not really focus, but set it as a goal per se. And try to level them at least to their normal level 20 instead of the mastery level because uh, normal level 20 will give you the stats that is shared between all of the classes. We call that like, uh, we call that a specialty bonus basically. Now for weapons for dark though, um, other than the axe, which you can replace with a seraphic weapon, you're, you're expected to get your own seraphic weapon, even as a SR 
weapon early as possible because it is a very good uh, damage cap weapon for element based damage and then these are the claws you should receive during the event or should I say in your inbox already and then this is the kind of weapon you receive from the storyline and these are all you need technically for you to be able to progress the game at least the starting part so you got a big chunk of HP, big chunk of damage and you have the skill level level already which is pretty nice now if you do, do note that if you're lacking again in the dark grid for example all of this stuff all of this stuff are farmable uh, this is an event only which is now possible to get in the code of redemption event i believe it's what it's called <laughs> yes and then uh, this is all from the current xeno event as of recording right now i would like to say that the xeno event is currently live so if you can please do go farm the xeno uh, I weapons and this is the proving ground weapon which is also a rare event but it should come back pretty soon hopefully and then we will talk about where to get this much later so we're just going to look through a lot of this great also back the summons this is obviously a very maxed out tier a uh, light great summon because i have been playing for many years but what you should look like for a normal free to play probably will be something like this Obviously, early game, you probably do not have these summons, the elemental summons, but you can farm this uh, Omega summons at their respective rate in the Omega tier. They drop, in my opinion, relatively often. Um, so if you have people helping you, it will do it every day. You probably will get it within about three weeks, give or take. It's not that long. Uh, and because there's a limited amount of tries every day, you will not going to be likely missing out on this too much they will come here very fast so till then you can just substitute with maybe you know a uh, sandal phone if you are doing his event his event gives you one for free i believe pretty well and then we have this carbon code which is a uh, very relatively often seen in gacha uh, as or so if you can get them because they reduce the damage you will take by 50 percent most of the time which is pretty good and then recently they introduced the event for Nobio. Uh, normally, most people wouldn't recommend to go for him first, but I will say that his core effect is pretty good. It's a healing, it's a charge bar boost, and it buffs you, shields you, heals you over time. And it has a crappy main aura, used for pretty much farming. But in the starting of the game, you do not want to use this as much because item drop rate has been pretty much fallen off uh, for most of the time mostly you're using it for the EXP grind now so if you're farming for EXP just do use Nobio Nobio is in the side stories and I'll see whether I will recommend you to farm him yeah okay for the win we do have the weapon this is a mix of an M1 and M2 grid uh, basically, Win does have a good M1 grid to say that you will get enough guns, but then you don't have the damage. And so you will struggle really hard on Win, and there is no way to prevent it, basically. So that's why I recommend that if you can, try to get to this tier as much as possible. Um, I also do not have the guns enough, enough the guns to actually portray a P Magna 1 grid. Just for guns, yes. Very nice. Yeah, as said, uh, this is how it's going to look like. Obviously, I'm using Dark because Dark? I'm <laughs> using Earth. Whoops. <laughs> I'm using Earth uh, Carbon Ghost because I'm fighting against Earth. Wind, wind begets Earth, right? So, yeah. And of course, you can get a free summon from the Eternal Defenders. Pretty decent one time use summon. And if you got no summon, it's pretty okay summon to use for early game anyway. What should be one given to you at 100? We'll talk about the character selection later. For water, Magna. Uh, I believe this is Magna 1 that I made, yes. Magna 1. Um, it's just a bunch of daggers. I have an Arcarian one just because if you're going to be farming Arcarian, you might as well have one slot there. Uh, you get them from the Arcarian, which we'll say about later. We also have the Xeno. Xeno water. Uh, a M2. Huh, but this one, you do not need it at the start, but it's nice to have one or two inside your grid. 
uh, Rising of the Beast, which recently was over. So you had to wait for the next hour TV to come. They come pretty often, so this is uh, quite easy to farm. And then Seraphic, which I said, I place emphasis that every breed should have a Seraphic. Unless you're fighting against non-elemental bosses or stuff, you should have a Seraphic to boost your damage and HP by a lot. Main hand is really debatable. Most of the time, you try to feed it to whatever you have. Uh, but the recommender is that you have a class that can suit a Xeno or Rising of the Beast uh, weapon or Opus or a good main hand like Gassam Gacha main hand which you'll show later then it's recommended that you try to follow to that class when you start out because it's important that you gain all of the class associated stats when you level up so for Earth it's the same I have 5 sword which is pretty decent for M1 for Earth. Earth M1 pretty decent. You deal relatively respectable damage, a uh, respectable amount of health as well. As you can see, it's not equal because I didn't have that uncapped. I basically you only need three swords basically to move fast most of the time. Um, and you can farm the other M2 stuff relatively into transition. So by the time you transit, you probably don't need the last two. Uh, that's just my my experience but obviously it is still important to have some of this and I said because you already get some of that for free you might as well use them <laughs> uh, on the right we have the Seraphira weapon which is the Archeron weapon as you said it's slot in uh, we have the Seraphic, Seraphic uh, Gauntlet we have Rising of the Beast for progression and then we have another Xeno. So basically this is all how you start off with the starting grid. I cannot basically be telling you get an Opus or anything because that's too expensive for anyone that early. So this is why I, I made this kind of stuff so that you can at least have a kind of comfort feel on how you should make... Oops, this is the quiet one. Yikes. Okay, yeah, this is how M2 light would look like. Did I show M1? I probably showed M1. I'm forgetful. <laughs> yeah. So, we have a uh, three uh, Neutron Bow, which can be gotten from uh, Metatron. It's not leveled because I'm no longer using... I've been using M1 for way so long that I have moved on to Primal before I hit with M2. So, uh, Primal in a sense is paid, but I got lucky and got into a lot of those roles. So, I got to do my light grid to be Primal. Yes. Uh, yeah, anyway. M2 usually relies on Pillar of Flame as well as uh, Neutron Bow, so it's pretty decent. And then obviously I have Opus, so I put Opus, but this is how an ideal M... It's not really ideal, but how a generic M2 grid would be like, and then you usually port around between what you need to use and what is efficient, right? Uh, there are many class guides on this, but I'm just showing that this is a relatively... Uh, relative power level you should have as M2. So for win, yes, um, M2 is usually revolving three Grimnia Harps uh, and one or two of this win holes because they boost your chain force, your CA damage, your OG damage, or your special attack damage, charge attack damage, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, I haven't upgraded this because I haven't used win team for a very long while, but you ideally would have uh, one or two of these wind holes or one or two of this area big which I haven't been farming area big for a while I'm not lucky so I still wait for a bit more bigs to come out and obviously uh, the same old same old arising out the beast bow and seraphic uh, I believe also a bow as well yeah summons pretty much uh, this is also an end game great summon um, not really very conducive for a friendly party kind of setup huh let me see where I put the next one. Yep, 1.5 water. Yes, there's a Magna 1.5. Uh, Magna 2 water is just basically full of these hubs, basically, instead of uh, what we have uh, of ancient Orbeons. So, yeah, instead of 3, 2, you basically have 5 hubs for M2. But for most of the M1.5, uh, for basic entry level, is 3 ancient Orbeons two of this uh, Europa hubs known as Tyros Zitter 
uh, or all farmable by the way. Uh, you also have a Rising of the Beast Hatchet, uh, Opus, and Astro. This is another series weapon which is very very time sink heavy. You probably won't get this. Uh, so you're better off making like something like a Malice weapon or a Proving Ground weapon, Clarion, and you probably will be able to sustain for a while. Uh, in the mid rate levels because. Uh, that's how you transition, right? I said this is also very endgame greedy. I don't know why I show this endgame greedy stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah, fire, flame, same things. We have Colossus. And then we have a lot of this. This is an M1.5. And it's probably... Uh, fire has no real M2 grid as far as I'm concerned. Because whatever you can farm from the Shiva rate is essentially not that useful except for his sword for HP uh, unless you want a tanky tanky build um, this is the highest damage build you can get uh, you get uh, 4 AES uh, 1 Astro, 1 Opus, 1 Katana Rise of the Beast another Rise of the Beast, have a fake weapon and a Xeno Flame Blade and since Fire Gate War is just over, um, this should be on your lower priority right now, but you should try to farm according to your Guild War priority. So for the current time of recording right now, the next Guild War coming up is Dark. So I would be more inclined to farm Dark in my general farming list, right? So in the starting area, you want to farm Celeste Omega, you farm it every day. And right now there's a drop rate increase, so it's even better to get all the summons if you need to. You won't get much from here. This is where you get your SR tier items, as it. You don't need to farm all this, but you still want to get all this so you can reduce them for certain upgrade materials. Um, then as you continue, you will get into this tier. This tier is where you get all your stuff. It's still the same. At a higher rate, so you wouldn't need to care about your summons as much once you reach this stage. And a lot of people will help you farm here. This stage, people will help you farm, so you're not as scared. Then this is the M2 place where you farm your avatar, your Metatron. This is where you show I showed you. You can get uh wait is it this one no Metatron. Where you can get basically pillar of light and your Metron bow, and basically all of your other stuff. You don't get a summons drop here, but yeah. This is where you get a harps. Not difficult. You want to try to rely on this list as much as possible. AP is 1.5 of Earth, but I would not talk about that because uh, personally, I have mixed feeling about Earth's 1.5 right now. So uh, yeah, but it's up to your discretion. You can go and research yourself. If you want to see Earth 1.5 and water, you can get Taiwan's Zitter. Uh, and you can get Oberon as well from here. There's another place you can get Oberon infinitely, but I wouldn't recommend that because solo raids to new players are harder. You will have to learn the boss mechanics, and those are things that whether you're a new player or not, do you want to invest the time in learning boss mechanics? That is also up to you. Because M1 is in the reason why it's called entry is because it doesn't have the HP, defense, or damage to outlive the boss most of the time. So you will have to think through what you need. You have also limited resources, like you don't have as much characters you can rely on. And so the way you can strategize to fight bosses are also way limited. So that's why I said try not to go for solo quests or solo raids as much as you can. Try to go for those uh, ones that you can actually share or you can use uh, Twitter or Raid Finder or whatever thing you can find to, to progress through. And this is this is one of the schematar of Brahman, which I said that you'll get HP and a bit tankiness for M2. Not really a reliable source of damage, but you can be infinitely tanky with this. Now for M1 flat uh M1 fire King Kong, it's basically full of canes. Five canes or three canes, two omega blade. Um other than that, there's nothing really much I can say about this. Um, M1 grid is pretty crappy. Uh, and it's, as much as it's relatively easy to get, it's also not that hard to get uh, AES most of the time. Uh, another place you can get it is from Arcava, but I'll tell you after the side story segment. 
uh, as for avatar um m2 we relies on this zacharias uh, heart as well as the abyss spine now i do not have the zacharias heart fully built to show you a uh, m2 grid but in circumstantial uh, you want to have either two or three abyss spines and two or three of zacharias as an intro to m2 and any upgraded grids usually relies on this this tier grids or this tier uh, but i will not be talking about this too because this are considered a uh, kind of a mid game and mid game ish because once you're able to do this you are able to do this to uh this this uh two tier of grids basically and by then i think you're more aware acquainted with the game enough to be able to do this kind of content but uh, that doesn't mean that there won't be any guy in the future talking about this but this is more for a newbie guide so I just try to tell you that this is technically on another spectrum which shouldn't be touched by a newbie but you could try it out and try to luck sack a few if you feel so courageous right okay um, next one to deal with is let's see side stories so to go to side stories what you guys do is in the home page gameplay extras there's this tab called side stories it should be unlocked once you finish a certain part of the main story quest in here usually it will be locked behind a lot of stuff and so you must complete a paramount amount of main story quest to even do this and also you have to walk through their own storyline prerequisites so for example this one needs me to complete ta table for six which is this prerequisites here on the left so in a certain sense uh it has its own side story uh, timeline so you have to do the prerequisite timeline before you can go to the next timeline and doing it all the way you will be able to go through everything now the first one I talk to talk about for side stories. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just looking at my notes. Uh, for the first side story, I would recommend Code of Redemption. You will be able to get a Eternal over here. So just complete through the quest, and you can get this six, which I showed you. I will show the uh, how's it, character display later of a few free characters you can get and a few like gacha but easy to get because they are as all and all characters yeah and this is where you can get one of the pretty easy to get main hand weapons it's quite decent as a main hand and the eternal defender that i showed off just now as well as you can get a mento to get one of the eternals um in sh short eternals are supposed to be one of the best characters law wise in the game and they are technically not as relevant anymore but you know they are pretty good as a new a newbie friendly unit basically um all of them are good okay all 10 of them are good but in my opinion if you want to start out very fast go for uh trio t-h-r-e-o now you may ask who is she Okay, well, I'll talk about it once we go to her character page. But basically, uh, one thing is that you can get 50 character uh, star fragments. And these star fragments are needed to uncap them to 100. So it's very expensive to get this. And you might, you might want to do this as fast as possible because this is very nice. Now, as who you select your first character shouldn't be tied down by what, how much star fragment or what star fragment you should get. Rather, you should tie down by what is the best element or should I say what is the best way to get yourself started as fast as possible so I'm going to go into the eternal series and do a quick talk about them <coughs> first we have Tuyen a master of debuffers uh, she is generally okay for light uh, content but I wouldn't recommend her for your first one she is pretty horrible I suffered a lot <laughs> Even as a guild war for guild war grinding, she isn't that good. She relies on hundred to be decent, so she's horrible at eighty. I would not recommend her as your first pick. Tian used to be lauded as the best first pick because of her ability to trigger bounty, 
and drop rate increase but nowadays in in the mid to end rates they don't really get affected by multi that much so it's kind of bad six one of the strongest till now uh has always been lauded as the strongest and it's really hard to beat him in dark even now in meta i think most of the people still have problem beating him but there are moments where he's getting overshadowed nowadays in power creep which is surprisingly being that when he was in level 100 he wasn't getting overshadowed but once he's 150 he's getting overshadowed uh, but obviously back then and now it's a whole different kind of ball game obviously so yeah but he's a good pick if you want him for dark guild war he's pretty good um the one i recommend a uh, trio uh most of the time it's because of ground zero you want to do true damage and you can do this to grind exp you can do this to grind certain bosses weak bosses and even certain raids that relies you to go into red hp she's pretty good i highly recommend her as your first pick so that you can go through your rank level faster so you can level up your rank to 100 get past the first uncap and start going camp on m2 raids pretty good as well and being that she is good against Europa, Europa tends to do a lot of like uh how to say t tends to do a lot of debuffs on you so like there's no real reason to be wary of it because you probably have to swap to a back line anyway so this uh is a good one for Europa as well so yeah Octo OG God nothing to say until you reach 100 level 100 plus so he's good at 100 but i wouldn't recommend picking him up until 100 uh past 100. Siophon, he is good at level 100 he's okay at level 80 but there's no reason to go straight for him he is just a handyman he think of him as a swiss army knife and back then he was a lot more better as a swiss army knife but right now he's just an uh, okay swiss army knife He's not bad, he's not good, but he is able to do a lot of stuff. Including doing a certain uh, multi-hit CEQ <laughs> uh, campaign exclusive quest where you can gain levels there as well. It's uh, usually held in MacFest and it's only a short period of 14 days. Uh, this guy can help you deal with that if you want to do leveling that way. But that relies you on knowing when CEQ is coming and that doesn't help that. The, it doesn't help Archeum as much, so over leveling uh, in CQ, Archeum is more important in my opinion, so yeah. Fiova, just a buffer. Um, you won't need him much, I don't use him at all, and to be honest. Um, so yeah, he's a debuffer buffer though, so he can be good, but he's just not good for me enough anyway. Fifth. Or I think people call her Fun Fu in her Japanese. She's a healer, manual healer. Um, she's good because she has auto revive. But I wouldn't put her as a first one. Maybe as a fourth or third. And you like Guild War, you can pick uh Tyrion first, then you pick her up because she doesn't help in OTK, but she helps on long raids. Neon uh lauded as the current best hundred fifty, uh eternal. But she is only okay at 100, so she's not something to rush to, you shouldn't need to bother. She is a buffer, but I will introduce you a more intro-friendly buffer later. So that uh, she can take the placeholder while she stays in here for a while until you got enough resources to un get her right. And Anre, let me get Anre. Anre is the final eternal I'm introducing. Now, she he has a, she's a very defensive character. He's a water nuker in the future at 100 plus. But an 80, he's just a person who just reduces your damage and that's all he does. <laughs> Reduce your damage taken for quite a lot. So, in that sense, he isn't that bad, but you can do this on your class Spartan uh, and Paladin, which you will get to. You, you can get it very easily actually. It's not that difficult to get Spartan. Nor Pala. You can even get it in Holy Sable, honestly. So it's not a hard thing to do. Okay, the next one for side story that I introduce is usually uh, Love. Uh, no, Princess Connect. We dive. 
So basically what you get here is, oops, what you get here is basically a uh, Pekorin, this girl here over here with the Onigiri. And she's a very good light tank, so you can have her. She does it really well for some cheesing as well because she has Osak, which is was very rare, but now it's still decent. All substitute is not common still, but it's not as rare as last time. Kokoro, the other buffer that I would like to recommend to you, the, which is the two tiers below Neon. I will put Neon as like I think top tier right now, followed by Monkey as Zodiac, which you will probably know more if you look at Sora video. I will recommend you to watch up Sora's video, Hoshi Sora. Uh, he does a lot of guides and he also went through i believe uh all the oldest characters that he went through so yeah also he recently uploaded uh the gbf university series so it's also similar to this so if you're watching this and you're not watching him uh, after my video please go and watch him he's a lot more veteran about it obviously but i appreciate that you're taking the time to watch me as well yeah next one Carol, um, he's, she's a dark debuffer, uh, uniquely dark has a lot of good characters, so it is technically bad, but because of how I'm suggesting it as a free-to-play, she is relatively decent and people do complete content with her, so yeah, uh, there are some weird people who like to use Carol, um, I accept and respect those. <laughs> anyway, you can get some of these weapons, they are decent because they boost to charge bar and charge attack pretty decent and obviously princess knight which also have hidden uh, skills involved in the summon this will probably be my first time talking about this kind of uh, mechanic where there are certain characters interacting with the summon differently or with hidden functions and princess knight is one of them whenever you interact with the princess connect characters it will have a special effect for more effect on what it does, you can go look at the GBF wiki. It is a good resource to rely on and it helps you learn the game a bit better, I feel. Because there's a lot of stuff like boss attacks, uh, stuff to look out for, strategize to maybe you know have a veil bot if you need to be anti-debuff. Or you need a lot of cleansing, you need a lot of healing, all of those stuff are on the GBF wiki. So yeah. The next side story I would like to recommend is What Makes the Sky Blue. Uh, what Makes the Sky Blue is a very important one because it's where you get Lyria, the girl which I pointed out just now. Uh, if I can find it. Oh yeah, another one I need to recommend before I forget. Together in Song. Um, <laughs> why do I keep pressing the wrong buttons? Yeah, Together in Song is very important because uh, you can get the Nobio from here. Yeah, you can get Narita and Nobio. And Nobio is from the uh, one of the hardest quests here. Uh, I believe he was in uh, either Heartfelt Performance or the Island Melody. I think it's a Heartfelt Performance. Uh, the Island Melody is very difficult. Uh, it's based on them giving you characters and you finish the pattern to complete the game. Uh, it is very difficult, I use a guide for it, so if you need to use a guide, don't be ashamed. And these two completing it will give you an OBO. Yeah. This is one other thing I didn't write in my notes, so I need to, to cut to this first before I continue. Okay, now, what makes the sky blue? We have the trilogy of one of the best storylines in Grand Blue Fantasy. Um, I'm not simping, okay? I'm not simping. Uh, but... What makes this series better, other than the story and its music, is that you can get a lot of stuff from it. Firstly, you will get Lyria. Uh, I've shown you, she's an SR, but she's a very good SR. She might as well be an SSO in some cases. Allows you to use double summons, uh, heals your party, buffs your party, and of course, um, gives you a lot of survivability, but also has a problem, which is that if, you, if she dies, the MC also croaks, goes along with it. So the MC at the max uncap have substitution for the main character, so you don't need to spend too much to just double down on keeping both of them alive. 
And also the main character gets buffed a lot, so yeah. I believe this summon has a special mechanic with uh, Lyria in regards to summoning, so I don't even recall what was it, but yes, uh, it's also a decent event summon. It does damage as well and boosts uh, damage for allies as well. And then the most important of all things is the Bahamut Nova weapon. The Bahamut Nova weapon is how you get the Bahamut dagger that I showed off just now. In my Dark Showcase, uh, wait, if I can find the Dark Showcase, this, this guy, you can get this guy upgraded. And he's pretty good because he, most of the characters in Grand Blue are Evans or Humans, so it's easily accessible both to attack. And both of these boost quite highly, so it's pretty good. And the amount of HP you gain is probably one of the most. So stacking this inside for a low HP team, with a lot of Aruns and a lot of uh, humans will probably boost it like crazy. And the rest of the Bahamut weapon actually can be gotten in here. In the weapon series, Bahamut weapon, you start with the Dawning New Universe, which you skip totally. If you start from where I told you from, what makes the sky blue. Uh, and you need rusted weapon. So if it's, it's, for example, if I want to make one spear of Bahamut, I'll need a rusted lens, which you found from uh, this rig over here known as Proto Bahamut. Over here. Wings of Terror, Proto Bahamut. And it's relatively mm, not that expensive, not that cheap also. So yeah. Uh, another place where you can get those kind of rusted weapons is actually Angel Halo. Uh, I have Angel Halo Pro Unlock, so this is the place where you usually farm your equipment, material, leveling material. And you want to do this every day once you get Eternal, so to start collecting all the uh, rare material drops when you have Eternal associated with it. So uh, each Eternal have a material associated with them. You want to grind with them as much as possible. Typically around 200 and about 300? I think 300 is a good place to start of those individual mat. Uh, if you're starting that early, you should have no problem getting to mass upgrading at the end game if you take this seriously. Now obviously you need Angel Healer Pro, so yeah. And you get a Nightmare. Nightmare is a very difficult one, I feel, uh, for early games, so try your best. If not, um, good luck, I guess. <laughs> and then uh, talking about slime, this is where you get your rank EXP and your level EXP. Without the CEQ, CEQ usually appear above the uncapped treasure quest. So yeah, but anyway, um, there is no impossible or pro difficulty for s slime. So uh, this is one of the places where you can actually level up. There is another place I recommend later, after I finish the side story elements. Now, in what makes the sky blues too? Um, Paradise Lost. You gain another character here. And it's Sandalphon. You can get him up to level 80, and he's a very good light tank. He has self-healing, self-debuff, as well as a whole lot of buffing, and multi-attack buffing, which is very valuable early game, since you do not have the characters to self-buff your, your internal multi-attack rate. And then you have the San the Lucio... No, is that Sandalphon? Sandalphon Salmon. Um, and do, I think not the last one, the last one isn't worth, but Sandalphon Summon is a very good summon. I do recommend getting him because you get uh, the sub aura. Your first time you get a sub aura for your summons and for light. It boosts light's HP and it is also a healer with, and it boosts your attack and does damage. And you get it relatively easily, so it's pretty good. Now the last one I will talk about is what makes the sky blue free that is important. What makes the sky blue tree has a one single thing that is very important about this. Actually not one, about two. One is that this allows you to uncap sender phone to 100. You get some okay weapons, a uh, very decent uh, Summon actually, he does a lot of damage. I that personally tested it, and he boosts charge bar as well, which is nice for early game. 
and then you get the Atma weapon. Atma are basically the base form of Ultima weapons. Yeah. Ultima is a uh, well, you can always hear in Final Fantasy and RPG games, they are one of the strongest weapons, te technically anyway. And it's not much different here, it is very strong. But, uh, as I said, I, it is a weapon you can get from here as well, in the Ultima section. And you can get the Ultima Recollection and again start by Rusted Weapons and climbing up. So, um, for my Ultima weapon, uh, let me see if actually if I found it. Here, yeah, here, this one. I haven't built my Ultima weapon. <laughs> you, it's not a necessity, but the final uncap is kind of painful to get. It's expensive. So, I do get his skill up and his second skill up. At, that's as much as I got him up to, and it's it's working well. But I do not have the means to get his max uncap. Um, that you will need to fight a very strong boss, and I have no capability to fight that right now. But it is a very strong uh, weapon. It increases your speciality with regards to the weapon. So since this is the Ultima Sword, it will boost Sword Speciality Allies for all their uh, necessary. So HP, attack, multi-attack rate, damage cap. Very good. Also a secret thing is that uh, if, you're, if your character is using the same weapon as the grid, they will have a synchronized effect of getting more stat boosts from this particular weapon, just in case you didn't know. And Paladin have a shield stuff here, yeah. These are not something you should want to focus on, but you can take a look about it, right? You can take a look on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one is Code Geass. Code Geass has a lot of like um, horrible characters, but I'm hoping the, the latest rebalance coming this any would fix them. Uh, but the most important thing here is probably CC and Varus. Varus is a decent gun you can get early game without getting Relic Buster's uh, uh, Clash Champion weapon for free from the event. Um, CC on the other hand is really good. It has an auto revive on its aura. So if you do somehow manage to get her faster than the Omega summons, it's a worth summon to do. It is basically a baby Bahamut plus a shield effect. So it's pretty decent. And then the Love Life characters. And then the Love Life characters. Um they are all debuffers and healers in their own right and support, so I wouldn't recommend relying on them too much. But if you need a bulk of bunch of like characters to supplement your team, the Love Lives characters are really good. <clears throat> with that, I think I'll end with the side story part and we'll go with events. As of right now, the first event that we're having, we'll talk about is Xeno Clash because it's happening right now. Now that they like to do dual element events, you can farm light and dark uh, to farm all of these weapons. This is all the Xeno weapons I showed just now, a PRP Sun Blade, a Sofa You do not want the summons, you do not want the fan. Try to get all of this, if you can. Try to get your stones, uh, if you can get Katana and Light Quartz. Katana stones is over here. Uh, Advocatus and Xeno Phantom Blade are very good as well, so do try to get them. And in general, how you're gonna farm the event is open up, go to a raid, go to let's say I want to do uh this, just host, open it up and host. Nothing wrong with it, just use your skills and people will come and help you. People will come and help you. So it's not difficult. And you just host it. There's no shame in hosting. This kind of raids usually will take a while if you're a newbie. If you're just really intro into the just started into the game. There's no reason to solo them. I have done this process and been through this process as well two years ago when I started playing. So this was what I did back then. And 
now it's actually made easier because a lot of people burst even harder than ever and if you start on the early days of the farming of the event more people will be inclined to go into the raid and help you out the second one i'll talk about around well, the gameplay behind is the rise of the beast now we talk about the rise of the beast weapon just now uh the recommendation for me is that you try to get the fire katana first as I feel it's personally is the best of the Rise of the Beast weapon. Because katana weapons are usually quite rare as well, so it's nice to have a good fire katana weapon. Uh, followed by the progression weapons, as they are important. Over long raids, they will give a lot of attack and substantial power boost. The, re the remaining Rise of the Beast weapon usually are okay but you can always farm them as a, at a later time if you feel that you cannot actually farm them fast enough the rest of the beast weapons <laughs> let me see if i can farm them. yeah this one <coughs> if you feel that you cannot farm out the farm finish the rise of the beast weapons the ones that you should look out for are okay there's a lot of xeno weapons here let me close up um, this one, the Summon Mirage, a good uh, CA damage booster, good for OTK, so it's helpful in bursting burst damage. This kind, Paradox Crossbow, good for progression. Now, all of this farming can be done in one event, but it's not maximum uncapped. Uh, my friend has done it recently, he joined the game. So, it is definitely doable, but it depends on how you play the game, obviously. Um, this one, like this kind of weapon, because it has the same with AES, you don't really need to farm it. Uh, you farm it for their main skill, and that's only if you're using dagger class. So if you feel like you're going to use dagger class, then just farm them. If not, you can just wait for the next guild war to do it. Uh, this spear, pretty good actually, because he has the armor effect, and he has a lot of uh, boosting to critical attack rate, which is nice for like M2 stuff. So this is like your introduction to M2, essentially. And a lot of this other stuff, you actually don't need it. Uh, yeah, Spring Whispering, very important as well. Uh, could intro the M2 for win as well. It's a win uh, multi-attack booster. And a slight note, I believe, Spring Whispering has a slightly higher boost to multi-attack rate than Grinia Heart. Grinia Heart does give a mirror image for a 5% less multi-attack rate, which is a good trade in my opinion. It's just depending on how you view multi-attack rate as a stat. And pretty much that's all the important ones. The rest are either going through Teeling Huan Long, which is a raid which is very difficult to get into because of the way people burst it. So it's you'll probably be lagged out of your PC uh, most of the time. So I do recommend you find a guide or maybe a time where your ping won't be crappy and you try to versus the Japanese people in <laughs> trying to enter the raid. Um, it's a hellhole uh, indeed. And then, yeah, I do think that that's all for Rising of the Beast. Okay, next one is Guild War. Um, as I said, Guild War, usually you get, uh, get wrecked. It's one of the most important events because you get most of your gems, your sparking materials, your gacha materials from there. Uh, but also, where you will get Eternals. To get your Eternals, you get one of these weapons, uncap it, go into a shop and uncap it in the revenant weapon section about i think 12 to 10, 10 to 12 times um and there is a few interlude process like upgrading the blacksmith which requires a whole bunch of rare materials we will get it from uh the gacha pool in guild war so you do want to buy one stash put all of your rare weapons inside now of course um each weapon corresponds to uh, one fully upgraded weapon would correspond to summoning one of the corresponding uh, specialty weapon of the Tuyen. So, for example, uh, for of the Tuyen, <laughs> of the Jutens. Uh, so, the dagger would be okay, the axe will be for Sarasa or Trio, which we said, right? And then, uh, example would be that. The katana will be for Okno, this kind of a uh, correlation. So they are very expensive, 
not really, but the upgrade is more expensive than getting them. Getting them is actually the easy part. Um, but starting the game, you won't be getting them easily because you need to box quite a few. However, I do recommend getting at least um, two fully uncapped, which is uh, one fully uncapped is one plus three, so you get four weapons worth to get uncapped one. So you get about eight boxes. I think for your first round is pretty admirable. You can do that and you can get another switch so you can at least have two Eternals to be at level 80 by the time next guild will come depending on what the next guild war element is so yeah and if there's a event which is coming at the end of february and lasts all the way to the end of march uh, it is how grand blue celebrates their free pool if you are ever here and you heard the free pool gimmick is during the anniversary events um, if you join during this time, this guide pretty much is obsolete as much as possible because you're going to get a lot of SSRs. So your funneling of SSR problem would not be really relevant here. However, um, that doesn't default you to not do your sliming to get to level 100 to uncap everything, to undo, to do your rank and cap quest, to continue leveling through. Everybody is subjected to a certain level of farming and grinding so that you can uncap your materials even when you're doing gacha. Your gacha weapons are kind of going to be obsolete if they're just plain zero star. Except for a select few. <clears throat> the Archeum events. Um, Archeum event just happened twice. Um, usually, you will see them here. So this is the sandbox. You will start off here at normal go through this uh, until stage 9. You have to complete 9, 9, 9, 3 times at Aquila 9, Bellator 9, and Celestius 9 for the total of 3 times. Go to hard, jump the same, go through to extreme. Now, the reason why we pick Sarasa is so that you can actually speak through this part, this part, normal and hard, very fast. And you can start farming extreme. Extreme is where you want to be. And then you can trade for a lot of stuff in here. Usually there will be a sunstone, I believe, which is a sunlight stone, which is used for uncapping uh, SSR summons. And there are also evil lights, which are in here. I already claimed all of them. And this is also where you can get your, your weapons, your, your cores and stuff. And all of this place is used to forge the summon. I already finished all my summons. And afterwards, I need to build my weapons. Someday. Someday. But uh, this is how much farming you need to do. And this is also the place where you can get EXP fastest. If you go into a raid and fight, you get a lot of EXP here. So this place is also another EXP ground, but it's limited by the tickets you have. As you can see, I have 56 out of 90 tickets. You usually need to buy the max ticket and cap uh, upgrade to get 90. I believe the starting base is 40 or 50. I think the base on cap was increased, so it was 40 or something. Um, honestly, 40 days is a decent amount of days for if you are lazy to farm. But I do recommend getting 90 days so that if you ever go on a super long hiatus or you just want to take a break from Archeum, you can just stack up this and you can fast expedition if you want. Obviously, I don't recommend this in the video because you need levels, you need your materials, so you're better off doing that to gain all your level 80s character also in here this is where your Archeum weapon will take effect uh, this is also where you get all your Archeum summons which I show you for free to play it's pretty good and then uh, during certain events they will speed up a uh, sand blocks worth of uh, boxing so basically they increase the gauge the top left gauge bonus over here when it's uh, an event so this speeds up the farming and you can get the boss uh, summon drop very much faster as well. Also, if you want to farm the 1.5 weapons, here is also the best place in your respective element. Uh, this place, I believe, is the water. So you can actually technically farm uh, some of your water weapons here as well. At the correct boss anyway. <laughs> yeah, so you want to get EX skills. This is also the place where you get it. And you also can get Militus weapons, which will also give you the upgraded Magna 2 as well, I believe. <clears throat> so yeah, 
it's pretty uh, uh this place was very difficult though uh sandbox i don't recommend early entry because you will struggle a lot until you get at least a decent m2 grid um yeah but for the original archeum uh max m1 should be able to do it uh sometimes close but most of the time you're able to do it yeah next place proving grounds uh yeah basically astro weapons uh i'll talk about them later west proving grounds actually uh pg weapons can i can i find pg weapons this is such a scarf uh video i guess not but uh basically there's this group of weapon called uh proving ground weapons um they are just used to boost your skill damage usually they are really good uh i cannot find them right now <laughs> I thought I found I, I bookmarked them but apparently not but uh yeah. Uh you can do that event, it's helpful, but it's very annoying to farm because you need to do every stage by bursting. Uh it is literally the reason for why burst characters are so necessary in content. Uh blame proving ground. Uh hate them a lot for that. But you know, yeah, if you want to do proving ground, you need to keep spamming. So you need to keep spamming until they drop, and you can uncap them. And eventually, you need to get all the stupid awakening materials <laughs> to further upgrade them. Which is, uh, awakening is not new. I've shown you exactly just now. Um, there are there are weapons that are max, and you can level them up to uh ex fifteen. Um, they increase stats of specific kind in a different modifier. So it's something not upgradable by Omega or Primal and yeah <laughs> that's how it goes right yeah okay next one is a Dread Barrage uh, event where it's similar to Guild War and it's not actually because the Dread Barrage is you just defeat as many enemy stars you can until you get the points and you also can get uh, Guild War weapons over there you also can get some of the tokens used for redeeming like Sunlight Stone and stuff. Uh, one thing I want to talk about actually before we go into that. Valor Badges, which you also can get from Grab Barrage and Guild War. I highly recommend getting the Evil Light at least about 5 or 6 before you jump to other stuff because you need at least, uh, I would say give or take 8 or 9 worth of Valor Badges of this one, Evil Light, to get all your summons needed for Akira. Yeah, afterwards you can just do, start doing Sunlight Stone, since it's quite useful anyway. Yeah. That's yeah, just my recommendation. Um, Tower of Babel, the game events. Uh, you do not want to do Tower of Babel early game. Um, even I also feel a bit difficult when I do Tower of Babel. It's a challenge reward kind of simulation. Um, it has your fundamental of what characters you have and if you don't have a certain character you're probably going to be locked behind full clear um, but it's kind of difficult so if you are in your first year of playing and encounter this event do not be disheartened you can always come back maybe another like six months or so and it will hopefully be a bit easier obviously you do need to farm very hard for it i haven't farmed as hard as i need to be on my m2 plus <laughs> my variety of m2s so yes that's a thing i had to fix but other than that yeah do not forget tower babble is meant to be difficult it's not meant for early game so do try to do other farming during that time to try to sustain yourself <coughs> next one i'll talk about is actually uh boxing during events uh, like Guild War, you will have boxing events and boxing events usually requires token to change and roll for internal loot boxes, right? And you want to do minimum, like normal people uh, in Grand Blue do about 30, 30 bucks, I think. I do usually about 18 boxes, maximum 20. Um, but as a new player, I recommend at least a 12, 10 to 12. You do not need to do crazy amount but i think 10 to 12 is necessary because you get enough of the gold gold boxes and gold boxes are now used to get gems as well and other rare materials so you want to try to hit the minimum so they make a special way of enticing you to get a bare minimum basically uh side games we are making you to grind a bit right 
smart, I guess so. Next one is play EMP. As you play, you'll notice this thing called extended mastery level. Uh, this one is gotten through playing the game once you max out your class level. Uh, I like to say, do not use your class level, this EMP stuff, on anything below class 4. <laughs> Class 4 should be your bare minimum to where you spend your EMP. Do not use like me in this class tier and below. You won't ever go back. Once you finish leveling up, you won't ever go back. And obviously, yeah, in a certain scenario, you will always have more uh, EMP than whatever you're farming. But when you're still leveling to max level, you will notice that the stuff starts creeping up more expensive way faster than you can get the levels to replenish. So yes, you can you can get to the max rank three to five, and then you can get a lot of EMP. But until then, you're actually gonna be suffering trying to get the EMP. So I highly recommend that you you spend it on your first class, Berserker Spartan, right? Uh, Chaos Ruler. I'm pretty sure most people use Luchador. Uh, I don't even think anyone use Esperas nowadays. Uh, do people use Esperas? I think Esperas is still used. Um, Lumberjack. Cavalier, Monk, okay. Robin Hood is fine. Relic Buster is used like nobody's business right now. It's always being used. Uh, class 5 is the newest class, so you should always use them if you can. If you unlock them, rush to uh, Paladin or Viking. They are really good. Electromantis is debatable. If you do not have HP, Electromantis is actually a, a bad class to have. But if you have HP, then Electromantis is actually pretty good. So I'm looking at use, use people using M1, don't try that tremendous. Go for M2. Um, as for M2, the first thing I would recommend would probably be Kango. <laughs> uh, truth be told, Kango is probably the best class in the whole entire uh, EX2. And you'll be using class champion weapon anyway, so might as well uh, make the class champion weapon your first one be Kango because you'll be using it anyway and you do need to make one of everything but to get for to class 4 to unlock class 4 you do need to make one max EX uh, not max half upgraded EX2 weapon so my recommendation do Kango get this Kango class and then you unlock everything on class 4 automatically then you can start progressing on class 5, then go back to EX2 and look for all the stuff you need to do. So, uh, I, go, I would say Kango, Runeslayer, Doctor. This three technically use quite a lot, Rising 4th, maybe 4th, Masquerade 5, the rest up to you. Uh, Glorybringer is very nice to look at, so I would say that if you want to go for Be Thirsty, you can go ahead and make, but just to be noted that every single class in EX2 needs to have their class champion weapon at least half upgraded, so they are kind of expensive and you need a lot of orbs and quads and weapon stones to do it so make sure you reduce your unnecessary weapon stones in the S or tier if you can get it now there will be another guide to talk about how to reduce fast and how which what to reduce and all of those stuff I intend to do that but for now uh, for newbie guide, and this is very take already, so I think this is where I'll stop for this part. Last part, I feel, is the moon from what you get from Gacha, right? In bronze tier, the one that's most worth, in my opinion, is the Damascus, but if you need for some reason something else, there's no, there's nothing here that's really worth that much as a bronze moon, so yeah. Silver is the same. Do not trade for this unless you want a very old grid, which then you will run. Uh, what is it? There used to be an old grid of what's the dark weapon here? Gisla. People used to run a lot of dark Gisla for primal. Um, it's a it's a dead composition, but that, that is one thing. But there's no reason to go for that. Stop trolling if you haven't intended to do that. But yeah, Temesco Singer is the next worth in the silver. Going good. This gold moon. Uh, try to save up actually. You can get this thing called illustrious weapon or superlative. Uh, they're all very good, but I recommend you to hold on to them. Uh, reason being that you never know when you might need to un 
to use Optimus Globe or just the Mabba. So these two are pretty good. Don't ever go for Sierra Pick the Cat. It's not worth. People who pick it always regret, and it's 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 going to show that if your last is so strong, it can't save you from regret. So just don't think about it. This is this is not even supposed to be here, man. Just kick this out, side games, please. Now, uh, I've been talking about the, the Seraphic Weapon series. Now, where do you find it? The Seraphic Weapon is actually over here. You have to do the first uh, storyline quest in here, and for each of them, you will get to uncap them slowly. Uh, if I'm not wrong, they use a lot of stuff from this Primarch Trial, from M2 Raids, from M2 Raids from here. They use the 4 Primarch uh, from here as well. In here, they use this, and they also use a lot of this as well. You the um, <laughs> I can't speak, <laughs> and the animals, yes. So respectively, you, you can grind those. They are important. Oh yeah, for class distinctions, um, you can actually get them from the shop at a certain rank. Uh, if you have managed to uncap your un first rank uncapped, you can actually go to a pendant shop and buy your, your yeah, yeah, you can buy your shot here, that's what I mean but the warrior crits and mage crits and all of the other uh, uncapped, class uncapped items, you can actually get it from here they are pr pretty good actually, so I do recommend using this method to get your stuff Swordmaster, Samurai, Ninja if you ever feel why the need and then the, there's two I believe that you need to actually farm Asteroid for it but JP Gods will help you right uh, you just open the red room and say opening the red room is very important get used to it and then you will be able to get help I'm pretty sure people will help you when you're just rank 100 right people will help you so yeah okay so I mean that's all for my script but I would like to talk a few more tips extra to put in to this place, right? Firstly, Skylip Point Shop. Use Skylip to play because you will get these points if you play daily. You get it from doing like, you, you I guess get enough to complete it just by skipping mission weekly. And you get whole tons of items like Intricacy Ring, Steel Break, Nightshade Ear Rings, all these Ear Rings, Urns, Fragments, they are hell to farm. Urns are actually relatively easy to farm. I wouldn't recommend trading urns. But fragments though, they are they are horrible. They don't even guarantee a drop when you do their raids, so it's pain. Don't do their Omega and their master because they are quite easy to get anyway. And they are very limited by monthly, so I don't recommend them. Uh however, if you have katana stones, which I did within this uh this month, uh always get them. Katana stones are one of the most used uh most used ones. See, I only left 91, and it's always very worth it to get katana stones and like quartz, which I did redeem as well. So, yeah. And also, obviously, be above here should have a AP pot restoration. I have also redeemed those. So, those are a very good way to redeem your pots. If you need a lot of pots, there's another way to redeem pots, which is here, Jewel Resort. Usually, you can get a free uh, credits or chips, what you call it, and then you can go to the cage, come in here and buy the shops uh, worth of pots as well. You want a lot of them, so it's nice. And obviously, if you are a smart gambler, I guess, I don't know how you, to recommend you to gamble. I don't recommend. But if you somehow look at the guides or something and, and choose to do that route, you can get a free SSL character inside. But I do recommend that it's a hazardous task, it's not easy. I'm not a gambler, so I can say so for myself. So, but if you ever want to give it a try, I don't know why you come here. If you really gotta try a lot, yeah. I guess you want more pain access, pain and suffering. Will you? <laughs> and yeah. I do think that that's all I would recommend. Ah, wait, one more. Journey Drops. Journey Drops is really a uh, very open resource. You actually will never be limited. I don't ever feel. Always try to get that EXP up. 
and your drop rate up or upgrade EXP and grand success rate where we are leveling up because uh, it's never worth keeping this they they come back so fast last month last year actually I had 23k now I'm 27k so it just shows how much you can get it's not worth keeping so you just spend it wherever you want now for class priority chain line uh, when you're leveling up I do have one tip for you as well um, which is for the when you at the start you try to get everything right from fighter all the way to lancer then you get this from warrior all the way to dragoon only when you start class 3 focus on weapon master holy saber and then try to level them then afterwards try to work on an ex tool instead and the one I recommend is Kengo as it to try to get Berserker. Once you get Berserker Spartan, you can start re resuming the rest already. And by the time you finish 3, you should be more or less be able to do 4. Now, why so awkward? Because in my opinion, Holy Saber and Weapon Master are the best of this tier. Obviously, you should get a uh, Dark Fencer for his uh, Miserable Miss, which is still useful for M2 grinding. Uh, if you want, actually, maybe you should do Dark Fencer first. Right, okay. Weapon Master, Holy Saber, Dark Fencer for M2 grinding. And then uh, run for Kango. Get Kango weapon, come back, Berserker Spartan, then continue your farm. Yeah, that way you actually have a, a lot more streamlined uh, power creep, I guess. Because you have Kango to help you if you need. You can farm the EMP needed. Go through all this easily. And relatively, you can also farm your Opus easily with uh, leeching. Opus first tier is not hard. People actually uh, get to host this rate very easily uh, with people helping them. So if you see Dark Rapture AD, this one, at chapter 114 and Imperial Ascension, try to host this daily. It's going to be a pain, but yeah, it, there'll, there'll be time where it's going to be free. Uh, free material host so you can do this 80 AP is not a big number do not be afraid of this uh, I only have 129 and I'm hosting this quite often as well so yeah I also do have a lot of stuff nowadays but yeah it just shows that even if you don't farm every day you'll still be able to participate using AP anyway uh, one more tip is rate list yeah I, as you can see I've actually been using the rate list a lot this was something I wasn't very used to in the past but rate list is very important to me because it shows you what rate you can do and this is how you actually can farm how much you can do and it will unlock as you play so this is a very important one make sure you try to use this as much as possible and use your AP because AP regenerates very fast okay with that I would like to thank you for watching this guide in 2023 um being that guild war that would be gonna would be a really big like change shift in how the game would work this year i feel um i do hope that it will stay relevant this video but if it doesn't stay relevant i would just have to make an excuse to make another one right yeah anyway thank you very much for watching i will see you next time uh, let's hope I can edit the videos in time before uh, New Year. It's a one hour video. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Happy New Year for those people who are celebrating the Lunar New Year's and ta-ta for now.